Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about the first part of our animal drawing and kind of uh, a little bit about value, um, which is the lightness or darkness of a color. Um, if we were in class, I'd give you these couple of notes and vocab words. Um, the value I will talk about today and we'll do a little practice for drawing a value scale and what that is used for, what is that? Um, and then eventually we'll talk more about proportion size relationship when we get to animal drawing next week, um, creating de dimensionality or depth, making something look 3D in a drawing. And then also um, enlargement, which is to make it bigger um, using a grid system. Um, I'm not gonna focus so much on enlarge for this project, but um, definitely uh, show you how to make a grid system to keep all of your proportions correct and help your animal look realistic when we actually draw it. So anyway, getting back to value, um, hopefully you got a chance to either print out your animal or do a tracing of your animal. So this is a tracing based on the uh, computer screen. Um, and what we're gonna be doing is trying to match the values, um, all the different shades of gray that are in this printout onto our good copy drawing when we're actually drawing it. So there's a couple of things we can do to practice that before we actually get started on that. And um, a lot of artists use this handy dandy gray scale and value finder um, so they can kind of um, look at the different areas on their printout um, or their source material or their resource picture and um, compare the values on here to the values on the picture and kind of figure out what shade of gray they're gonna to need to draw onto the good copy. So we're gonna make our own um, gray scale and value finder. Um, this one's pre-printed, just comes right from the art store like this. And we have a couple of these at school, but I do like to have everybody make a value scale um, because it will help you um, figure out how hard or light to, draw, to use your pencils, and uh, it will also help you on your good copy paper uh, when you're actually drawing your good copy of your animal. So I'll put that aside for just a sec. Um, and I, for this demo, I am going to show you two different ways. Now, some of you might just have the good old pencil at home, which is great. This can be definitely done with a regular pencil, and I'm not sure if my camera will focus on it, but um, you may notice that almost on, on every regular pencil, there's a little code on it. Um, you've probably heard of a number two pencil and for PSSA and things like that, they say, make sure you use a number two pencil. Um, there's also a tiny little code on the bottom of this that says HB. That is um, how hard or soft the graphite is. And a lot of people say, oh, this is a pencil lead. Well, lead is a little bit of a misnomer. It's not actually lead, it's graphite. Um, you know, some people refer to it as lead, but it's just um, known as that name, even though it's not a pencil lead. Long story, there's a lot of theories about that. But um, I, for this demo, I'll talk to you about it, about, um, about the graphite. So like I said, HB is a little code that says how hard or soft the graphite is. The graphite is um, ground up and I'll link a really cool YouTube video of how it's made uh, pencils for you. But um, basically the graphite is ground into a powder and then in a machine it's mixed with clay and some other binding agents um, to create this um, you know, pencil graphite that is inside of these wooden casings. Uh, then they glue the wooden casings on and paint them and do all sorts of things and stamp codes on them and attach erasers and um, eraser holders to it. So um, that's how, kind of how the pencils are made. But artists are really concerned about how hard or soft this graphite is because um, I don't know if you've ever made a mark with a rock on your driveway or another rock at home, um, but uh, you may notice that some rocks draw on other rocks. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but something I used to do when I was a kid. Some rocks are too hard to draw. Some some rocks are nice and soft, so they, they draw really easily on the other rocks. So that's kind of the same uh, principle as your, your pencil graphites. And um, if you have a kit like this at home, you might have a whole different brand, which is completely fine. There's um, all different great brands out there. And um, these are graded drawing pencils. So you might have a kit at home where it has like 
man, all these different pe pencils, they seem to just draw the same type of gray. What do they do? Um, well, there's actually codes on each of the pencils and I can show you that a little bit closer, like for the sketch kit right here, if I can not get my reflection. Yep, there we go. Um, they are, they have little codes on them. So HB, hey, guess what? That is exactly the same as our little yellow regular pencil that will draw almost exactly the same as your regular pencil draws. But as we go through the list here, we got 2B, which is a little bit darker, 4B, which is a code for a little bit darker, 6B a little bit darker, and 8B is really quite dark. Um, this B indicates um, how soft the lead is. So as you go up through the numbers with the, if it has a B in the back of it, um, I kind of remember B stands for bold and that's how dark your pencils are gonna draw. There is a whole nother side to this, which are actually H pencils. And let's see if I can hold this up. This is from another uh, drawing kit that I have. Um, but um, you can see that the codes are stamped on the on the um, tops of these pencils. And then we have, um, you know, the uh, HB, which is a regular pencil, the 2B, which is a little bit darker, and the 3B, which is a little bit darker, but there's a whole nother range on the other side of HB. HB, I called it the Goldilocks pencil because it's a little bit hard and it's a little bit bold. It's a great medium uh, pencil for versatile writing and drawing. Um, but if you have pencils that have H's on them, like um, an H, a 2H, a 3H, and it goes on and on, that's how hard the um, graphites are. So they draw a much lighter um, a, a shape. So I'll show you how those work as well. And at school, I usually give you a set of six drawing pencils, a little bit in the H range, a little bit in the B range, so you can give, give that a try. Also really helpful to have around a pencil sharpener. This is a sharpener right here, um, so that you can continuously have a really nice point on your pencil. And um, helpful to have around an eraser. Regular pencil eraser will do just fine, but maybe at home you might have a cap eraser. This is nice because we do a lot of erasing and you can add a cap on there. Um, you can have one of our brick erasers, okay? So this is, you, you might, they might come in pink or they might come in white or another color. Um, you might even in your drawing kit at home have a kneaded eraser. So check this out. It looks like a piece of gray clay and this is always a hit. I'm so sorry we're not at school because you get to try this. Um, so when we get back, we'll, we'll give you some of this and so you can try it out. This is actually an eraser. This is rubber and it's called kneaded eraser because you can knead it just like dough or knead it, you know, just like bread dough. So um, you can pull it apart and then smoosh it back together. You can um, make it a big flat area for erasing big parts. Or if you wanna spin it into a point, you can make a point for precision erasing as well. So if you need to erase a teeny little area, you can make it into a point and erase a teeny little area with this. And then when it gets dirty, it'll start um, turning bl uh, black or dark gray from the pencil. Um, you can just pull it apart and smush it back together and it's self-cleaning, it cleans itself. Um, I've had a kneaded eraser for 20 years um, and as long as you don't lose it, you can pull it apart and then smush it back together and keep using it. This is a nice soft eraser. You can even use this to blend areas too, which I can show you. Um, and then last but not least, these are getting harder to find, but in your drawing kit, you might um, have um, an, a, a pencil that it's an eraser inside of a pencil casing. So if I sharpen uh, this a little bit, um, you can kind of see that this is um, an eraser tip inside here. So this whole thing is filled with eraser. Isn't that fancy? This is great. Um, you can sharpen this into a really good point um, and do precision erasing that way. So if you have tiny little detail areas to erase, you could use one of these too. So all really neat things. And you might have stuff in your drawing kit at home that actually um, I, is, isn't seen here. So there are so many options for you for um, drawing. So anyway, um, we're, we're gonna start out with a regular piece of paper, and this is just a plain sheet of copy paper that I took out of my printer. But if you wanna rip um, a sheet out of a drawing pad, if you wanna use a piece of junk mail, the back of junk mail or something like that, 
Um, feel free, this is just like an experimental paper where we're gonna do a value scale and then some also some um, textures practices on here over the next week too. So anyway, we wanna fold this up. Um, you don't have to do it exactly the same as me, but um, basically I'm gonna remove this so you can see straight down on here. Um, you don't have to do the same exact folds as me, but we do wanna kind of like make something that looks like a grid on here. Um, I'm just going to do a hot dog fold at first um, and then do another hot dog fold or horizontal fold and then make a really long skinny strip. This is going to set us up for making our own value scale. And then um, you can fold it kind of um, hamburger style or, you know, a vertical fold in here um, and crease it really well. And then um, maybe I could do one more, maybe I could do two more too. So maybe I'm gonna make this into thirds. And like I said, doesn't really matter. You don't have to have as many rectangles or squares as I do, but I wanted to make sure that I had six because I wanted to show you um, different ways to use the, pen use the pencils. So once you have it all folded up, um, unfold it. So you should have something that has a whole bunch of squares or rectangles on it, which is great because we're going to do some experimenting on here. And then um, what I'm going to do is do a value scale. So I'm going to draw this uh, rectangle very dark, a little light, this one a little lighter, 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 and this one a little lighter. So um, um, I usually like to start in the middle first. That way I can gauge how dark I need to go on either side. And um, I'm going to first start with a regular pencil. I'll do this value scale with regular pencil in case you're just following along at home with a regular pencil. And then I'll do another row using these fancy drawing pencils. So if you do have fancy drawing pencils at home and you want to try a value scale with them, you could um, stay in the video and um, you know, follow along with me for that row. So let me see if I can get this to zoom just a little bit. Thanks for bearing with me with the technology. Okay. So anywho, um, we have a rectangle right here that probably is, you know, in the middle. This one or this one doesn't really matter um, that I want to just um, draw with the HB pencil in here. And the best thing to do is instead of having your pencil straight up and down like this, which is going to make a hard line, I want to rock my pencil down so that its uh, side is almost like, um, you know, parallel with the side of with the edge of the paper so this is going to allow us to do get a broad sweeping motion too sometimes i even change the position of my hand um, sometimes i still hold it like the normal pencil way that we're going to do sometimes i back up and choke up on it a little bit depending on how much room i have so i want to rack it down so that it makes a like a broad shading sweeping motion and just with like medium pressure i'm going to um shade it in I'm not pressing very hard, I'm just pressing kind of medium right now. We can always go back and make it darker if we need to, but I don't know if you've noticed, sometimes when you draw really dark um, on something, here I'll get a piece of scrap paper and demonstrate, sometimes when you draw really dark on something, it's so hard to erase. So try to avoid pressing really hard right away anytime you're drawing, because that's going to be really hard to erase if it's a mistake. So I can clean this up a little bit because I went out of the lines of my rectangle just a bit. So it's okay, I can use my eraser and erase that. And then what I'm gonna do is um, decide, hmm, do I want this to be this side to be darker or do I want that side to be darker? Well, I think for my demo, I'll make this side darker and this side lighter. So what I'm gonna do is do exactly the same thing in this um, middle block. And I'm still just working on the middle values right now. Same thing where I rock my pencil down so that the edge of it is um, onto the paper. And then I'm going to do another lighter block and clean it up a bit. Now, if these, if these overlapped a teeny bit, completely fine. It's just for practice. Um, and then I'm going to do another bit of a lighter one. And then a lighter one barely touching. Okay, so now I gotta make this side darker. Um, let's see. 
I press kind of medium on here. So maybe I want to rock my pencil down and press a little bit harder for this one. It's okay if they look kind of similar right now too because we can always go back and make them darker like I said. And then for the very last one, I'm gonna press pretty hard, but not so hard that it's not erasable. If it gets a little tricky on the edge of the paper there, just hold it down with your other hand. And by the way, guys, if you're doing this like on your couch or something, <laughs> or some sort of soft surface, it's gonna be super hard. So try to get something hard underneath. This is a drawing board that I have underneath that obviously I've used for painting in the past, but um, this is a good hard surface. Also a good surface to do is if I stick my big drawing pads back in here too, I can um, have a nice um, harder drawing surface for this, okay? Let me zoom out just a teeny bit so we can look at the whole thing. And you might say, mm, Hoisington, this kind of looks the same in through here. This shade of gray is almost the same as that shade of gray. Or maybe that shade of gray looks lighter than that shade of gray, but that one should be darker. Well, now's the time to go in and start um, darkening some of these so that you can see a clear difference. Light, darker, 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 okay? So I'm just gonna spin my paper because it's easier for me at my, the way that my drawing table is set up. And um, it's also a kind of a neat thing to do too. You may notice that the pencil lines on here, um, the strokes are going um, in one direction. And one thing that you can do to actually make it darker is to color uh, or shade in the opposite direction. That's called cross hatching. This is hatching lines going in one direction. Cross hatching is two lines going in opposite directions or overlapping um, sets of lines. So check it out. Um, this is my very super lightest one. I want this one to be a little bit darker. So what I'm gonna do is um, rock my pencil down so that it's gonna do the um, shading type of technique. And then I'll just go side to side with this as well. Whoa, it's getting darker because it's filling in some of those little spots. Um, I missed a couple, so I can just go in and try to press the same amount of pressure in through there and kind of shade it and blend it a bit. Um, and then you can you can see um, the lighting is not fabulous in here, but um, this one's a little lighter and then this one is becoming a little bit darker. Hmm, okay. So if we zoom out a bit and um, compare them, we got, um, I don't know, this one looks still a little bit lighter. So what I'm gonna do is do the cross hatching technique and um, layer, keep layering thin layers of pencil on top of each other and then create this to be a little bit darker. Um, when I was in college, I had a professor that wouldn't let us draw very dark. He said, my, our drawing professor said, the best thing to do is to um, layer thin layers of pencil on top of each other instead of just pressing really hard and going really dark right away. And that's very smart because as you know, you can't erase really, really dark pencil if you draw too dark and too thick. Plus it makes dents in your paper too, like our experiment from earlier. It actually dents your paper a little bit and um, makes that very hard to get rid of. So we're just going to use really thin layers of pencil um, and overlap them on each other. You might say, hey, Mrs. Hoisington, I just saw you go on a diagonal. Definitely, you can overlap, you can do horizontal lines, vertical lines, diagonal lines, and the more you layer those um, pencil layers on top of each other, the darker that it's gonna get. So I'm gonna keep on going, and I'm still trying to achieve super dark uh, levels down here. So it might involve me doing some horizontal lines and some vertical lines and some diagonal lines on top of each other. And I'm trying to do the same even amount of pressure throughout the whole thing and not press crazy hard. Okay, last one. We are going to make this one super dark. So I'm laying my pencil down and guess what? My pencil is getting dull and it doesn't have a great point. Really good idea to periodically get your pencil sharpener and then sharpen it so that you have the best amount of um, area on the side of this to do your shading with. So it's okay to pause the video and take a break and sharpen 
Sometimes kids' um, hands get tired, so you can pause the video and kind of shake it out and do some little finger and hand exercises. Um, once you get your hands acclimated to holding a pencil for a long time and sketching with it, um, you might have to take some breaks and don't wear out your hand. Okay, so I'm doing a couple more horizontal and diagonal lines on here and let's check it out. If we kind of hold it up like this and then zoom out just a tad, um, you can kind of see that we're starting to create um, light, darker, 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 darker. And I do see a problem. Do you see where the problem is? Yeah, that one. I think so too. So um, now is the time to kind of fine tune it a little bit and you can go back in and try to make it like look like a gradient. So lighter, 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 lighter. You might say, oh, this one is too dark. So you can really lightly, you don't have to press hard. You can go really lightly with, an, with a pencil eraser and clean it up just a bit too. Also, if, if you have a kneaded eraser at home, these nifty little kneaded erasers, um, a cool thing to do is to just put it, um, make a little um, hat for your finger. Hello. And then you can dab it off and use the eraser that way too. And then just lift off a little bit of that graphite and get it to go away so it fades it a bit. So you can keep working on this and then your whole goal is to make it, um, you know, dark shades all the way to the light shades, okay? And this, keep this around, don't lose this piece of paper because next week we're definitely gonna use it when we, bring, when we get our animal pictures back in. Adorable. Um, and then we're gonna use this to figure out where the different shades of gray are on our resource picture and then how hard or soft we need to um, color or sheet on our good copy paper. So this thing is not just busy work, this thing is gonna come in handy. And again, this thing is called um, a value scale. Okay. And value again is how light or dark um, the shading is on your picture. Value can also mean um, how light or dark a, a color is too. Um, and when, when we talk about painting, we'll talk a little bit more about um, uh, color values as well. But for now, we're just doing the shades of gray. All right, stay tuned. If you want to see how to use the graded drawing pencils, um, I will show you that next. If not, you can close the video. Okay, so as far as the graded drawing um, pencils, I've already lined mine up in um, the order that I have them in. Um, you might have, if you have a kit like this, you might have more numbers and letters um, all mixed in here. Um, the, at our house, since we have two artists here, we got so many. And we have all different brands too that are all mixed up all together because we're always drawing around here. So there's different brands and different um, pencils everywhere. So um, you can pick out a range of six that you'd like to try and then kind of put them in order. Um, I like to put the HB um, in the middle and then remember H is next after that. And then if we're kind of doing a continuum here of... Um, lighter graphites and then darker uh, graphites. These are kind of the H range pencils and these are kind of the B range pencils. All right. So um, you can just put yours in order, whichever ones you have. I just happen to have a 2H and a 3H. But if you have like a an H and then maybe like a 4H and a 6H, that's completely fine too. It's really up to you. And then um, here I have a 2B for my darkers or my bolder ones, and then a 3B, but sometimes I use like a an HB and I skip all the way to 4B and 6B. Okay, so just for the example, I have just these couple pencils here, but pick six that you wanna try or however many um, blocks that you have and we can try that out with that. 
So anywho, just like I did for the previous um, demo, I started with the middle values and your middle value is going to be the H or the HB. So I'll go with HB again and exactly the same way that I just did the other demo. Make sure that your pencils are sharpened. Good thing to have a sharpener around. By the way, if you don't have a pencil sharpener at home, um, ask your parents to do it for you. They can sharpen it with an X-Acto knife um, or a razor knife. My dad used to do that for me before we got a pencil sharpener at our house growing up. Yes, we didn't have a pencil sharpener. <laughs> So I would always tell my dad to sharpen the pencils for me. And he did, because he was a nice dad. Okay, so same way, um, and I'm just gonna speed through this and probably use the fast forward uh, feature on my video editing. Same thing, so this is, I'll label these also for you guys. Um, this one I used my HB pencil. And this one is going, I switched out my pencil, this one is going to be the H pencil. And you can actually feel how hard this pencil is. So it makes these crazy little lines on here. And I'm gonna cross hatch and maybe hatch on a diagonal too. Okay, now I'm gonna try out the two each. And go through this. So um, you might be thinking, if you're looking at these closely, oh, it's so scribbly. Can we blend it, Mrs. Hoisington? Yes, we can. 
So um, I want to give you a couple tips for blending and you can do a number of things. Um, one of them is um, using your finger. So when I was a kid, I used to blend all the time with my finger. So I would just um, take the flat part of my finger and rub the pencil. And this kind of smudges it just a little bit and moves the graphite around um, and pushes it to all the corners and fills in all those little white spots and things like that and kind of makes a fuzzy type of um, texture on here. Um, this is called burnishing and uh, well it's a form of burnishing and we'll talk about that when, when I give you a couple more texture notes but um, that will help fill it in a little bit too and if you kind of look at it from far away and zoom out you can see um, it's really nice and blended in that one block that we just did. But here's the bad thing. Oh man, I gotta go wash my finger. So um, another couple things you could do too, and you might have these things at home, um, uh, using a tissue, and try not to use a tissue that has um, lotion in it, like puffs with lotion does not work. Use a plain tissue. For this, I'm going to, going to just use a tiny piece of it. So maybe I could use this tissue for something else. Um, <laughs> you can do what I call ghost finger. I made this up when I was a kid. You dress up your finger for Halloween. Easiest Halloween costume ever, ghost. So um, you can just make your little protection for your finger and um, you know blend that way if you wanted to. So if you wanted to move it around, this works really well for um, shading and smudging and burnishing in through here. Okay, and then it really makes it look nice and faded. See all these pencil marks in the 2B and, and 3B range? Check it out. If I just use Ghost Finger on this, it really moves that graphite around and makes it look really nice and smooth. This is going to be a really useful technique too. Um, if you have an animal uh, drawing that's something that's soft and fuzzy, uh, we could use this technique on your pencil shading and then make it look really nice and soft and fuzzy. So there's just a couple of techniques to, to try out and keep in mind. Um, I would recommend, you know, practicing. You could do a lot more practice on here. Um, when I come back next week, we're going to do a couple of texture practices in the bottom block. So keep this paper around if you can. And um, next week, we will actually start gridding and drawing the animal as well. So thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful weekend. By the way, one last thing that I thought of. Besides these two um, I, objects that you can use for blending, you can also get a Q-tip too if you're you're at home. So maybe you have Q-tips hanging around, and then you want to use um, you know a swab or something. You could also shade with that as well.